Uh, this meeting will include interpretation in Spanish and Vietnamese. Uh, gracias and welcome to our interpreters for today, Armando, Vincent, Tiffany, and Priscilla. To access the interpretation in Spanish and Vietnamese, click on the interpretation button on your Zoom screen and then select the appropriate language. In addition, for all, for essentially for all of us, uh, uh, your interpretation is set to off. We recommend that you click on the interpretation and go to the English channel so you can hear all the interpretations in English. Uh, we have two videos, one in Spanish and another in Vietnamese that will play right now. That dreaded uh, waiting button. We'll we'll get it going in just a second. Okay, I think may, I don't know Aurelia if, if, if it's going to play. I, Bienvenidos a esta reunión. Para acceder a la función de interpretación, haga clic en el icono del globo en la parte inferior de la ventana de Zoom y selecciona el idioma que desea. Para escuchar claramente el audio de interpretación, le recomendamos que también seleccione la... Xin chào và cảm ơn quý vị đã tham dự buổi họp ngày hôm nay. Để truy cập vào phần thông dịch của ứng dụng Zoom, xin nhấn vào biểu tượng hình quả địa cầu ở phía dưới của màn hình và chọn ngôn ngữ theo ý muốn của quý vị. Để nghe rõ lời phiên dịch, chúng tôi khuyến khích quý vị chọn chức năng tắt âm thanh góc nằm ở phía cuối trong phần tùy chọn của biểu tượng quả địa cầu. Great. Uh, so task force members, uh, we ask all of you to rename yourselves on Zoom by first and last name and also to add your organization name, just so we can ensure that we, I, we can identify you as a task force member. Uh, just uh, all you have to do is just click on your image on the top right, um, click on the little three, three dots and just rename yourself uh, to your first and last name and uh, your organization. Uh, this meeting is open to the public. Saludos to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you'll be able to hear and see tonight's meeting, including observing the various breakouts uh, of the committees. And you will have the opportunity for two minutes time to share your voice and comments during the public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, this will happen towards the end of the agenda. Until then, we do appreciate your patience and respect during the rest of the meeting. Uh, and for task force members, there will be time after each section of the agenda for questions. And we ask that if you do have a question during that time to use the raise your hand feature down below on your Zoom screen. And uh, either Rosalind or myself will be the one announcing your name so you can unmute yourself. And also just be sure to, uh, before you speak, to also just uh, say your name and your organization for our accessibility purposes. Uh, I believe that's it. Back to you, Rosalind. Hey, thanks so much, Carlos. So before we do get into the agenda for this evening's meeting, it is our custom uh, to start our meetings acknowledging that we are on the ancestral lands of the Ohlone people. And we pay respect to their elders past and present, and we give thanks to their sacrifice and examples of humility, stewardship, and resilience. So with that, uh, the next slide, I'm going to do just a very quick review of our agenda for this evening. Um, 
We're going to start off with some brief uh, task force updates, some information we just want to share with the task force members. Um, and also, this will be a time for task force members to share announcements about events or activities that they want to make sure that task force members are aware of. Um, the next item on our agenda is about meeting procedures. We had a discussion uh, about this at our last task force meeting. So we will be going over Rosenberg's rules of orders. And we're very glad that our city clerk, Tony Tabor, uh, is joining us this evening and will walk us through that portion of the agenda. Then we'll do a quick review of the task force committee process, and then we're going to jump immediately uh, into our breakouts where we'll have the opportunity for each of the committees uh, to actually conduct their meetings during this time. Um, and you'll have about 60 to 70 minutes for those committee meetings. Um, then we'll, of course, we'll have public comment, talk a little bit about next steps, and then we'll be adjourning the meeting. Um, so with that next slide, I think I will be just next slide, please, going over some of the updates, just information we want to share with the task force um, members. So uh, just this week on Tuesday um, at the city council meeting, uh, city staff provided an update um, on the city roadmap. Um, and as, as a reminder, uh, COVID-19 recovery is one of the eight enterprise priorities that's included in the city roadmap. Uh, and we provided um, updates actually on five of the eight enterprise priorities. Um, so we were really pleased to share some um, exciting results in moving our work forward. Um, and our next update to our city council will be in May. Um, also, we are reporting uh, on our work through the Committee and Economic Development Committee. Um, so later this month at, at their March 28th meeting, um, city staff will be providing updates to two COVID recovery initiatives that are in the roadmap. The first one is small business recovery. Um, and the other update will be on reemployment and workforce development. Um, and then lastly, um, city staff is reporting uh, on the progress of this task force um, also at the Community and Economic Development Committee. And our next update uh, to the committee will be on April 25th. Um, the next item is around the promotores model, which we really introduced, I think, in our very first task force meeting back in November. Um, and it's a desire by our city council, and we think by many in our community, um, to actually pilot the promotores model as we conduct our community engagement process um, through the task force. As, and as I know that you're likely aware that promotoras are uniquely qualified to address the needs of underserved communities because they reach really our community members where they are. And that is right there in their neighborhood. So they speak the same language, they share uh, common culture, um, and they connect with people where they are. So we think that this model will be really effective in uh, reaching uh, residents throughout our neighborhoods, particularly those neighborhoods who have been greatly uh, impacted by COVID-19. So we're super excited that our city council actually allocated $500,000 um, to assist us um, in this work. And the community engagement um, committee uh, we'll actually be sharing more about ideas about how we'll be implementing the model in our community engagement process. So we're extremely excited about that funding allocation and that we'll be able to use it through this task force process. Um, so with that, we'll ask if there are any uh, members of our task force who happen to have announcements that they would like to share to the group, um, this is the time to do so. So if you have something to share, an event coming up, an activity, an acknowledgement, um, please raise your hands and we'll call on you. Christine, I see your hand up, go ahead.
Christine, uh, I think you're, you're yeah, go ahead. Okay, I wasn't sure what you were calling on me. Can you go hear ahead. me? Yes. Okay. So the Silicon Valley Independent Living Center, along with a lot of different independent living centers, are in the process of gathering um, short 30-second oh, videos uh, to address the upcoming um, discussion uh, on the uh, State of California Resolution Number 5 on uh, March 15th. That is um, the censure or the comments from the, the, the representatives um, stating how it's important to get back to a quote unquote regular non-masked stance in relation to COVID. And those of us in the disability community are very concerned about this as it um, affects so many still to this day. And we feel that it's, um, it'd be more advantageous to slow down and to really think about where we want to go with this. So we're asking people to do short videos to explain why continuing the mask mandate it's so important to them. As a lot of us have um, respiratory conditions that can be adversely, seriously adversely affected. So just wanted to bring that to everybody here. Thank you so much, Christine, for sharing. Um, I see Araceli, you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Um, just wanted to um, let um, everybody know that the state will be closing the state applications for rental assistance as of March 31st. If you guys could please share the word um, to our clients as we know that March 31st is the cutoff. Um, I know the information has been slowly um, going to a lot of organizations, but we wanna make sure to try to get as much word out there as it we can is to try to help these families um, apply. Great, thank you so much for sharing that announcement. That's such critical information to get out to our residents. And we're very excited that we have a housing committee um, that I'm sure we'll be focusing on that and certainly city staff as well. Um, I don't think I see any other hands. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for sharing the information with the group. Um, so we'll go into the next agenda item, uh, which I believe, yes, we're going to ask Tony Tabor um, to walk us through the presentation on meeting procedures using Rosenberg's rules of order. So I'll turn it over to you, Tony. Hi, I would like to first apologize that I don't have a camera on my work desktop computer, so I'm on microphone only. And I tried to keep this to about four slides because it is a lot of information, um, but the basics themselves are pretty simple. Um, first, I'm sure you've all, um, can you do next slide? I'm sorry, I'm used to controlling my own slides. Um, go back one. Right there. So. Most of you have probably heard of Robert's Rules of Order. That's been around for a couple hundred years. It's a very thick book. I own a couple copies of it, one at home and one here in the office, and I've never read it cover to cover. It's just too long. Most of it doesn't apply to public agencies. Um, public agencies have a lot of rules that um, govern what we can talk about in a meeting. Um, so you can't have motions to add things and stuff like that. So um, Dave Rosenberg, was a superior court judge who was also on a multi, uh, the city council of Davis, California. Um, and he wrote these like sort of simplified Robert's rules. Nothing's different from Robert's rules. He just took out all the things that public agencies use and put it into one document. And now a lot of cities in California and throughout the, the country are adopting Rosenberg's rules of order instead of Robert's rules. I'm here at the city. We did adopt Rosenberg's rules of order for the use in boards and commissions because it's just a lot simpler. Um, so we're going to go over some of the main parts of it. 
Um, the first part is the role of the chair. Um, the chair is sort of the leader of the meeting. The chair can make a motion. I, I included that second one. They're generally discouraged from making motions, but a chair is allowed to. I get that question a lot. Um, I think every border commission has asked me that at least once. Can the chair make a motion? Yes, the chair can make a motion. The reason you don't typically hear it is the chair is sort of governing the meeting, making sure the rules of conduct are applied, making sure everything's orderly, making sure all of the different um, commission members get their chance to speak. Um, so generally they don't make a motion, but they absolutely can. And you'll occasionally see Mayor Licardo make the motion. Um, he usually doesn't. If you ever watch a council meeting, he runs a really good meeting. Um, I do enjoy him as mayor just, just based on the rules of order because um, he, he keeps things really simple and clear, um, but you will see him making motions. Next slide. Back one. Okay, so the order of the meeting, this is where I'll also get a lot of questions. Um, the chair will announce the item. So you have, you know, item 3A coming up. Um, they'll usually see, you want to say the title, you know, we're going to um, item 3A is next. That's the adopt a resolution regarding the election. Um, I'm working on elections right now, so that's in my, on my head. And then the staff will present the report. And then the commission, the chair would go to the commission to ask any clarifying questions, but not start a discussion yet. You're just like, is there any clarifying questions? Do you have any questions for staff? Then you go to public comment and let the public comment before your discussion. And that is so you can take the public comments into consideration when you, before you make a decision. You want to hear what their opinions are before you start your discussion. Otherwise, the public will feel it didn't matter what I said because they already discussed everything before I even was allowed to speak. So that's why you go to public comment next. Um, somebody makes a motion. The chair should repeat the motion to make sure it's clear. Um, we, we don't always do that at city council. It is best practices though. It really helps your, your secretary who's recording the minutes to know exactly what the motion was. And sometimes somebody will talk and then say, and that's my motion. Um, and then um, like I tend to perk up when I hear the word I move. So when they talk and then move it, it's always like, oh, what did they just say for five minutes? I wasn't really listening that closely. So the chair should repeat the motion and say, you know, um, Commissioner Fitzgerald approved or moved to accept the staff recommendation. And then you have your discussion and then you have your vote. And when you're um, in a teleconference, you have to roll call vote. That's actually state law. That's not Rosenberg's rule of order. So state law in California, um, if you're teleconferenced, all votes must be roll call votes. And then the result should be announced. Either the secretary should announce it or the chair should announce it. So um, that's also state law. State law says you have to say it audibly. So people who can't see like a display of the vote um, will know what the vote was. So I usually won't say, you know, all 11 council members would have yes. It's most motion passes unanimously. Motion passes 10 to one with council member Smith voting no. Um, or like the example here, the motion passes three to two with Smith and Doe voting no. Next slide. So the basics, you don't have to do this perfectly. I, I want to stress that this isn't like if somebody doesn't word things perfectly, it's okay. But your basic is I move we approve staff recommendation. I move that we amend the motion. I move a substitute motion. So a basic motion is just your first emotion, your first motion. You can move to amend. So if you say I, I move staff recommendation, but now uh, a different person wants staff recommendation, but they also want to include a report back in six months. You know, I move that we amend the motion to include um, a report back in six months. Um, and then you have substitute motions. So a substitute motion, somebody else is like, I don't even want to approve staff recommendation. I move that we send this back to the staff and let them come back with um, an alternative or, or something. So that's a substitute motion. Now, you have to vote on the substitute motion before voting on the main motion. 
You cannot have two substitute motions on the floor. That's probably the main thing. You can't have a motion and an amended motion and then a substitute motion, and then somebody else doesn't like the substitute motion, so they want to do another substitute motion. You can't do that. You have to vote on the, the substitute motion first before you allow another substitute motion and before you vote on the main motion. If the substitute motion passes, it's over. It's done. You don't go back to the main motion. Now, I'm going back to friendly amendment because in Rosenberg's rules of order and Robert's rules of order, friendly amendment is not a thing. Um, but every council I have ever worked at uses the friendly amendment. Um, this is when um, you'll, you'll hear, say, Council Member Jones may say, you know, Council Member Prowlis, can you add an amendment to your motion to include a report back in six months? And Council Member Prowlis be like, oh, yeah, I'll accept that. And it, it adds to his original motion. It, it becomes his amended motion. Um, so when I say the rules aren't, we, they're not something to beat you over the head with. <laughs> You know, you don't have to be perfect. Friendly amendments are perfectly fine. I've worked at, I think, four cities in a special district. All of them have used friendly amendment. Um, I've gone to city clerk conferences, and when we talk about Rosenberg's rules of order, the, the person instructing us will always say, friendly amendments aren't a thing, and the rest of us are like, yeah, but we're still going to use them <laughs> because it's just it's a nice way to do it. It's, it's really works well when you have a commission that gets along and everybody respects each other. And that's the goal of your commission is that you guys respect each other. Um, but you can do it formally. You can uh, do it. I move that we amend. Um, and that becomes an amended mo motion. Next slide. So basic rules um, are to attend to the business efficiently, fairly, and fully. You want to recognize one speaker at a time. Don't talk over each other. I'm sure you guys are not doing that. We have had commissions where I have to go to them a couple times a year to remind them not to talk over each other and to remind them that you need to let each other speak. Um, the, that's a, the, a good chair is going to do that. A good chair will recognize a speaker. And then if somebody tries to interrupt that speaker, it's like no Commissioner Smith Hopefully there's no Commissioner Smith on there since I keep using it. Um, no Commissioner Smith, it's not your turn. We're, we haven't recognized you yet. Let Commissioner Jones finish. Um, the chair may impose time limits on both commissioners and the public. Um, the public at the city generally has two minutes. Um, some cities do three minutes, some cities do five minutes, some do one minute. And that's the discretion of the chair. And then the commissioners as well, um, if you know you have a really packed agenda, but you guys need to be out by 10, you can say, you know, we're going to limit each commissioner to five minutes per topic or less or more. Um, you should not interrupt the speaker, but if you need to, you would say point of privilege. That's related to, you know, point of privilege. I can't hear you. Um, but you can also just say, excuse me, I can't hear you. If you don't say point of privilege, you're not gonna get kicked out of the meeting. Um, but that is the way to do it. If you wanna look like you really know what you're doing and you know the rules, point of privilege, I can't hear you, point of privilege, this room is way too cold. Um, point of order, that's related to inappropriate contact, conduct at the meeting. Now you'll hear that a lot. Um, point of order, you forgot to call public comment. Point of order, um, we didn't vote on that last item or we didn't have a motion. Um, point of order, you're letting everybody talk to, um, over each other and the meeting's getting out of hand. Um, so you do hear point of order a few times. Generally in a city though, you've, you know, you've got a secretary who's going to make sure you follow that agenda. So that's usually not too big of an issue. And then there's a few others. Um, you can withdraw a motion. You can, the, the chair should make sure the commission stays on, on the agenda. In a city meeting, you cannot stray off the topic. So you could in a non-public meeting, but any public meeting of any public agency, you need to stay on the topic of the agendas. Um, and sometimes, you know, people will stray and the chair um, or the staff person, if the staff person recognizes, oh, we're, we're getting off topic, the staff person can also bring it back. 
Um, and then I've also sent your staff a couple of the documents. I'm not sure if he distributed that to you guys, but I do have a Rosenberg's Rules of Order cheat sheet and um, another document. So the League of California Cities has put together a Rosenberg's Rules of Order document. I have the original one that he did. Um, I still saved it. I like it better than the League of California Cities one. I think it's actually easier to read. Um, but I did send a couple of those over to your staff for you to have a copy of that. And the, the cheat sheet has like the exact wording for all sorts of different things that I didn't cover here. I just covered really the main things. And does anybody, that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I'm not seeing hands. I do want to emphasize the rules are not a club to use against each other. We have had that at other commissions where somebody will say, you didn't follow the rules. You didn't say it right. It's okay. Oh, Mimi, I see your hand. I just have a quick question. Um, so just to make sure I understand. So point or an order can be when somebody's going down a rabbit's hole in a different direction because we want to keep time, right? So yeah, you, you could say point of order, the, the, the speaker's okay. getting off topic. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay. Tony, thank you so very much. We appreciate all this information to help us stay orderly. That's going to be really important for us. Uh, this task force has 55 members. And no. so with, with that, I do have a question because you yes. did mention um roll call votes so, uh -huh. uh, obviously to do a roll call with 55 people would certainly take uh, uh some time um would it be okay as long as we're virtual so in this zoom platform uh to use the raise hand feature is that acceptable or not no okay <laughs> i'm sorry I um, but that's state law. You could talk to the attorney's office. They may have a different interpretation. Um, they have told me, no, I have to do a roll call, but you do okay. have 55 people. And that's yeah, we're, a we're a bit unusual. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you for clarifying that. So um, if we need to do that, we will. And we just make sure that we build enough time in our agenda for, for motions and voting. Yes, and when you go to vote, we, since I, I did this with Charter Review, we had 23 people, we had to call them, not quite as many as you. I would tell them at the beginning, everybody unmute, because then you go faster because they don't have to scramble looking for the, the, the mute button. So when we call for a vote, everybody just unmute and stay quiet and then say yes and then mute yourself. It's quick, a lot quicker. That's my tip of the day. Great, well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you joining us tonight. No problem. All right, so we will go right into our next agenda item, which is reviewing uh, the process for our task force committees. And I believe I'm turning it over to you, Carlos. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Tony. I was, I was, I, I don't think we formally met. I was like, I'm gonna finally meet Tony via virtually, and I guess the camera's off. So I guess I'll have to wait for a physical uh, opportunity to physically introduce myself to you. You have to Thank watch so our much, city council meeting, Carlos. Yeah, well, I only hear her voice too in the, the city council meetings. <laughs> um, but thank you so much, Tony. And we did those that cheat sheet. I, we did send out to you all the task all the task force members at last week's uh, email that we sent out. So uh, there are some attachments there should you want, need some more information. Um, so back to uh, the agenda, we're talking about the committee process, which I think Aurelia and I are going to be tag teaming on. Uh, next slide, Aurelia. So uh, thank you, task force members, for working with us in the last uh, couple weeks to confirm the committees that you wish to join. Uh, this roster that you see here reflects the membership roster of the task of the committees. Um, as you can see, uh, there are some alternates listed in these committees. Uh, these committees have already welcomed alternates, something that each committee is able to do. Um, but in just a bit, we will be breaking out uh, for these committees to meet. As you saw in the agenda, we are allotting uh, about 70 minutes time for each of these committees to meet. Um, we recognize that some of you uh, have signed up for multiple committees. Uh, 
you will have the opportunity to, uh, tonight to divide your time today between these two committees. Uh, some of you may have uh, come to tonight's meeting with the uh, intention to invite non-task force, non-alternates to tonight's meeting. Uh, you will have the opportunity to do that during uh, tonight's breakout. Uh, but uh, just sharing this roster here, uh, thank you all. We're truly excited to begin this stage of the task force task force's work. I think the next slide um, is you, Aurelia. Yes, thank you, Carlos. Good evening, everyone. As you could see, um, we went over this the last time we all met last month, but just a reminder where we're at. Um, in fact, there's three committees that already met prior to this meeting. So um, the, this of what you see here tonight, it's just a proposal, it's just a suggestion, but really we've pretty much are done with the setup of the committees. Um, I think now we're, most of us are in the process of finalizing and defining um, the topics um, and then starting to figure out what other data that we uh, could, other data and resources that we could potentially pull in. Um, so this is gonna happen um, from now until hopefully till our next meeting in April. Um, and then in the springtime, we're hoping that all of you are going to start to think about some gaps, some actions to address the needs. Um, and then later down the line in the fall, um, we hope for all of you to um, compile the feedback um, and then start to think about some finalizing action items um, to share to the task force and that by November, um, to take some of those actions uh, to council. And then, like I mentioned at the, below at the bottom, community engagement, this will most likely in everyone's plan, uh, winter consulting, when one of our consultants um, is actually going to be leading the community engagement um, along with the committees. So the work there, um, you know, that there's gonna be some connection and potentially for them to reach out to some of you from the task force. All so, right. I, so, I'm sorry, did I, okay. No, nope, I'm sending it back to you, Carlos. Great. So. Um, I believe we are now going into the next part of the meeting, the meat of tonight's meeting. The part that I'm excited about is an opportunity for each of you to break into groups according to the committees. Um, we have allotted 70 minutes time for you all to meet. Um, as I mentioned, we recognize that some of you have signed up for multiple committees. You will have the opportunity to divide your time today between these committees. Uh, there will be a button uh, on the lower right side of your screen that allows you to uh, leave a room or move to another one. Uh, just be careful to click on leaving the room and not the meeting. Uh, you will then have the option of selecting another room to move to. Each of the rooms will be categorized by the committee name, so you will able to you will be able to see which one of the uh, committee rooms you will be joining. Uh, to the members of the public. Uh, you will have the option to, to join any committee room that you wish uh, and to use the same function of leaving a room and joining another one, as I just explained. Uh, but to the members of the public in the breakout rooms, we do ask that you continue to be patient and allow only the task force members to, uh, and committee members to participate. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, you will have the opportunity for two minutes time during the public comment section of the meeting, uh, which is the next item of the agenda after, uh, after the committee's meet. Uh, each room will be facilitated by someone from our recovery team or from our consultant team, from the Ramey and Winter consultant team that you uh, met last month. Um, otherwise, um, unless there are any questions, um, we will begin to uh, have you all break off into groups. I did have one uh, question. We wanna make sure that we, if someone needs 
Spanish or Vietnamese interpretation to let us know so we can place an interpreter in your room. Um, can, uh, for some, for the folks who need Spanish interpretation, can you please raise your hand now uh, by pressing the raise uh, your hand button? Okay, Jose, um, I believe uh, we will be placing a, okay, so we'll go ahead and place an interpreter in your room. Um, for now, for those who wish to have Vietnamese interpretation, uh, can you please raise your hand now uh, by pressing the raise your hand button? Okay, don't see someone raising your hand, so. Um, I think we are now ready. So, uh, uh, Katerina, we'll go ahead and, and place you in, in, into your appropriate rooms. Thank you, everyone. Hello everyone, welcome back. All right. Just on everyone to get back into the room. Hopefully you had some productive meetings. I know we did here at the Community Engagement Committee. Um, don't know if I see Rosalind here on the call. I'm right here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> um, all right, I think we have everybody back on, uh, Katerina, if you can confirm. Um, I think we'll, we, I mean, I don't know, Rosalind, if you have anything to add. Otherwise, I think we'll go into the next item, which is the public comment period. Yes, thanks. All right. So, um, so I believe it this is a time for, for members of the public to uh, who are present to, if you do have an opportunity, if you do wish to make a comment, to uh, uh, raise your hand and we'll go ahead and call on you. Okay, I see uh, Gabriel. Go ahead, Gabriel. Yeah, no, I just wanted to offer that, you know, again, in terms of some of the committees um, um, and questions about getting community input and stuff, um, we would offer up um, being able to help uh, do that kind of outreach and, and help inform some of the committees. So just to put that out and open to anyone that um, would want to. Uh, have us you know participate in their committees to help inform them i know there was a discussion in the committee that i was in about um you know the promotores and how we organize with them things of that sort so. thank you gabriel other folks from the public who wish to make a comment raise your hand Yeah, I think we are good with public comment, Rosalind. So I think maybe we'll go on to the next, just just the next steps and before we adjourn. Yeah, well, thank you so much everyone um, for your participation in the committee breakouts. We hope you got some good work conducted and um, I, I know there's lots of information to gather and um, excitement about engaging residents. So a lot of good work ahead of us. Um, and I'm hoping that everyone uh, had the opportunity to select a chair or co-chairs and you're getting some ideas around your meeting cadence. So thanks again. So our next uh, full task force meeting is scheduled for Thursday, April 14th, again at 6 p.m. We'll, we'll continue 
uh, this virtual um, meeting uh, for the time being. Um, we're hoping, as I said previously, uh, to perhaps later this year do some in-person meetings, task force meetings, and particularly some in-person engagement activities. Um, you have all of our staff contact here. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and with that, we are going to end the meeting right on time this evening. Uh, again, thanks for your participation and we will see you at the next task force meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks everyone.